ever wondered what kind of skin condition chickens get? Eczema. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have a friend who doesn't really like to talk about her dry skin. She'd rather just sweep it under the carpets. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Ryan here. I hope you and your folks are well. Today we're tackling one of the neurocutaneous epileptic syndromes called tuberous this is the outline of our talk. We're going to be tackling a clinical case, then looking at tuberous sclerosis, breaking down the key points, introduction, <clears throat> etiologies, covering how patients present, looking at a plausible differential diagnosis, diagnostic evaluation and investigations, treatment and management, and prognostication and complications. Then, of course, we're going to end off uh, with a scripture. Okay, guys, here we go. Ah. Tuberous sclerosis is a dominantly inherited genetic disorder in which tumors, usually hamatomas, develop in multiple organs. Diagnosis requires imaging of the organs which are affected. Treatment is symptomatic, or if the CNS tumors are growing, we can consider uh, <clears throat> a mammalian target of rapamycin inhibitor in the way of Everolimus. Patients must be <clears throat> monitored regularly to check for complications. And that's basically it, guys, in terms of the key points. Well done! This is the introduction, guys. Tuberous sclerosis is a neurocutaneous syndrome that occurs in 1 per 60,000 population. So, albeit not that common, 85% involve mutations in our beloved TSC1 gene, which controls the production of hamatin, or the TSC2 gene, which controls the production of tuberin. If either parent has a disorder, kids have a 50% a uh, chance of having it because autosomal dominant inheritance, we said. However, new mutations account for about two thirds of cases. Patients with tuberous sclerosis, also termed the tuberous sclerosis complex, have tumors or abnormalities that manifest at different ages and in different organs. They can affect brain, heart, eyes, kidneys, lungs, and skin. CNS tubers interrupt neural circuits, causing developmental delay and ultimately cognitive impairment, may cause seizures, including infantile spasms. Sometimes the tubers grow and obstruct CSF flow from the lateral ventricles, causing unilateral hydrocephalus. Sometimes the tubers undergo malignant degeneration to gliomas, particularly subepidermal giant cell astrocytomas. But remember, they can cause, they are anidus for seizures, essentially. Cardiac myomas may develop prenatally, sometimes causing heart failure, sorry for the typo, in neonates. These myomas tend to disappear over time and usually do not cause symptoms uh, uh, later in childhood or in adulthood. Kidney tumors, otherwise called angiolipomas or angiomyolipomas, may develop in adults and in polycystic kidney disease may develop at any age. And the kidney disease, as you know, may cause hypertension because of elaboration of renin, right? Pulmonary lesions such as lymphangioleomyomatosis, otherwise called LAM, <laughs> LAM, <laughs> may develop, particularly in adolescent girls. How do patients present? The manifestations of, you know, many. They vary greatly in terms of severity. Skin lesions are typically present. Seizures, intellectual disability, autism, learning disorders, or behavioral problems. Retinal patches are common and may be visible with fundoscopy and pitting of enamel in permanent teeth is also common. Skin findings include initially have pale ash-leafed macules which develop during infancy or early childhood. Then you may have angiofibromas of the face, otherwise more affectionately termed adenoma sebaceum, which develop during later childhood. Then congenital shagreen patches, which refers to raised lesions resembling an orange peel, usually on the back. You can also get subcutaneous nodules, cafe only spots, which you know bears resemblance to neurofibromatosis, its uh, cousin, right? and subangular fibromas, which can develop at any time during childhood or early adulthood. A handy mnemonic, guys, to remember the clinical manifestations of tuberous sclerosis is ash leaf. So A speaks to ash leaf macules, so ash leaf spots. S is shagreen patch. H is heart rhabdomyomas. L is lephangioleomyomatosis. E is epilepsy from the cortical tubers. A is angiomyolipomata in the kidneys. F, facial angiofibromas. Ash leaf. There you have it, guys. Very handy mnemonic. So here we can see just um, what some of the clinical manifestations look like. Okay, let's just get my pointer in there. So this is a beautiful ash leaf spot or the ash leaf macule. 
hypopigmented. I mean, look at a differential of a hypopigmented macula just now. This is a beautiful shag green patch on the back. It uh, looks like Poe orange with an orange peel texture, if you feel it. Now, this is um, angiofibroma affecting the digit. This is lymphangelia myomatosis, which gives you a chylothorax. It looks milky, right? Uh, so usually it manifests in, in terms of pleuritis or pleural fluid. You tap it, it looks like that, right? This is facial angiofibromata. These are angiomyolipomas in the kidney. We can appreciate via ultrasound scan. Guys, just looking at different causes of hypopigmentation, right? There's a whole lot of stuff to talk about. So we've got primary cutaneous disorders and then you get systemic diseases and the primary cutaneous disorders are split into diffuse and localized. So generalized vitiligo is the poster child usually for diffuse primary cutaneous disorders. And localized includes post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, idiopathic guttate hypomyelinosis, vitiligo vesicular, which is caused by melesesia furfur, vitiligo, chemical or drug, <coughs> excuse me, induced leukoderma, example of topical imicomoid or oral imatinib, no, nevus depigmentosis and pigmentary mosaicism. Right. Uh, systemic diseases can be diffuse or localized. Diffuse ocular cutaneous albinism, chedia kigashi, phenyl ketonuria, localized systemic sclerosis, and usually that gives you the salt and pepper pigmentation. Then melanoma associated with vitiligo like leukoderma, sarcoidosis, cutaneous T cell lymphoma, especially mycosis, fungoides called Cesare syndrome, tuberculoid and indeterminate leprosy. Tuberous sclerosis, this way it fits into the whole world of hyperpigmentation. It causes localized um, hyperpigmentation in the way of ash leaf macules. Diagnosis is by identification of the skin lesions, which we mentioned the ash leaf spots, the shy green patch, uh, the, angiomyo, uh, the angiofibromas, imaging of the affected organs, and genetic testing. Tuberous sclerosis may be suspected when fetal ultrasound detects cardiac myomas or when infantile spasms occur. Physical exam is then, then done to check for typical skin lesions and phenoscopy should be done to check for retinal patches. Cardiac or cranial, cranial manifestation may be visible on routine prenatal ultrasound, MRI or ultrasound of the affected organs if necessary for confirmation. Specific genetic testing, genetic testing is available. In terms of prognosis, guys, prognosis depends largely on symptom severity. Infants with mild symptoms generally do well and lead long productive lives. Infants with severe symptoms may have serious disabilities. Regardless of severity, most children show continued developmental progress. In terms of treatment, there's two arms, symptomatic treatment and everolimus. For seizures, we can use anticonvulsants, especially vigabatrin, for infantile spasms or sometimes even epilepsy surgery if refractory. For skin lesions, consider derm abrasion or laser techniques. For neurobehavioral problems, behavioral management techniques or drugs. For hypertension caused by renal problems, antihypertensive meds or surgery to remove those growing tubers. Uh, for developmental delays, special schooling or occupational therapy. For malignant tumors and some benign tumors, the only drug which is recommended is Everonimus, which is a family of the mammalian target of rapamycin inhibitors. Right? In terms of screening for complications, all patients should be screened regularly so that we pick up those complications early on. Typically, the following is done. MRI of the head to check for intracranial complications at least every three years. Renal ultrasound to check for kidney tumors every three years in school-aged kids and every one to two years in adults. Chest x in girls, especially those in the late T18s to look for lymphangelia myomatosis. Okay, it may show up as a pleural effusion, which you tap it, it'll be chylothorax. Neuropsychiatric testing periodically in kids to help plan for support in school. Use of sterolimus and its derivative everonimus to prevent and treat most of the complications of tuberous sclerosis is currently under study. Clinical monitoring is also important and sometimes prompts more frequent testing. Development of headaches, loss of skills, or new kinds of seizures may be caused by malignant degeneration or growth of those CNS tubers and are indications for neuroimaging. Okay, my friends, it's time to talk about scripture. Today we're talking about godliness with contentment. 1 Timothy 6, 6-7. Here Paul is encouraging the young Timothy by saying, But godliness with contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Um, Job is a very righteous man. I mentioned in the Old Testament who went under significant trial in his life. At one point, he had lost everything. He lost his children, he lost his home, he lost his health. And all he said was, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
For indeed, beloved, we can take nothing with us from this earth. From dust we were created, and to dust we will return. Let us be content with what we have and give glory to God in all and in every circumstance. Here are my references, guys. You can catch me on Facebook. Just search for Internal Medicine, Algorithms, and Mnemonics for my Facebook page. I've got lots of resources there for you. You can also catch me on Instagram and on TikTok. Have yourself a wonderful day. We've got some exciting topics coming up. Gout and hyperuricemia, inflammatory bowel disease, hypercalcemia. Looking forward to seeing you there. Take care. God bless. Have a wonderful day.